Hi guys and welcome, my name is Sarah and today I will be taking you through a 20 minute flow. So today's flow is aimed at intermediates but um, also advanced beginners. It's not an easy but hard flow. Um, we'll be working on uh, strength and length basically. So a lot of it's going to be leg based. Um, so yeah, let's come to find a seat. So we're going to begin with doing some breath work to begin with. So you might like to either find a cushion to sit on, a block or a bolster, or anything that you might have to hand. And then once you've found your seat, there's no rush coming to find your setup. Maybe closing down the eyes or taking a soft gaze out in front of you. And slightly lowering the chin down towards the chest, finding that length through the neck, through the spine. Flowing down through the sit bones, sending the crown up towards the sitting, really finding that length through the body. And taking a moment to settle here into your chosen posture, how you've decided to sit. And then start to come to find your awareness of your breath. And we're observing the breath coming in and observing the breath coming out. And we're not trying to change anything or force anything. We're just merely observing the inflow and outflow of the breath. And to help with the thought pattern, you might like to incorporate using the word inhale as you inhale and exhale as you exhale. And you know that if the mind wanders, this is perfectly normal. Just gently bringing it back to that awareness, back to the inhale and to the exhale. Taking four to five more rounds in your time of this breath awareness practice. feel like you've done your final round of breath, there is no rush if you are still with your breath. Coming to slowly open up the eyes if you took the option to close them. And then we're going to find our way gently down on towards the mat. So we're bringing, well not on towards the mat, sorry, we're coming to find a seat with the legs extended out long. So before we begin to begin to wait today's practice, know that if there's anything that you don't feel that feels right for your body or is serving you today, just simply leave it. Or if there's any modifications that you would like to give yourself, then please feel free to take them. I will offer some along the way um, where possible. And also, if there's any props that you have at home, always feel free to incorporate those into your practice also. There's the option of child's pose at any time. So with the legs extended out nice and long, we're going to flex. So you might like to just actually start by removing some of the fleshy parts out from underneath the sit bones so that we're really grounding down through the mat. And really finding some length through the spine, gazing towards the top of the mat. And then we're going to flex the toes towards the face. And as you do so, you might notice that the heels are lift off of the mat ever so slightly. And then we're going to place them back down. We're just going to do that one more time, and then this time you might notice that how that brings in a little bit of engagement into the quads, into the legs, into the shins, and then lower them back down. And then next we're coming to find a forward fold. So a forward fold actually might be where you are now in Dandasana. This might be where you want to stay. But if you want to come into a forward fold and you want to extend forward, you might like to take the hands and walk them forward. Still keeping in mind that we want that length through the spine, we're not rounding forward and dumping into the pose. Or maybe you're taking the hands behind you, helping to walk the hands in towards the body to help you find that you can kind of 
come towards the body a little bit more easeful. And if it's there for you this early on in your practice already, you might take the hands maybe towards the toes or to the outside of the feet or maybe the forearms come down towards the mat. And we're going to be here for five rounds of breath. And really breathing into this pose and you might notice that with each breath that you're maybe to be able to come in deeper to the pose. Final round of breath coming up if you folded forward, coming to bend the knees so we're planting the feet on towards the mat. We're bringing the hands behind us so the fingertips are facing the buttocks. And we're going to lift up into a reverse tabletop. So we're lifting the hips up towards the ceiling, coming into a reverse tabletop. So the gaze is up towards the ceiling, or maybe it's down in front towards the front of the mat for you. Really Engaging through those glutes and then coming to lower the hips back down towards the mat and as we do so we're going to take the right foot, the right ankle across the left knee. And then you might need your hand to help you adjust it and manoeuvre it and we're coming to find a figure four. With the hands you might like to walk the hands towards the body or you might like to walk them away. Finding whatever variation works for you here in this variation of figure four. And we're sending the knee towards the front of the mat. So really pushing that knee away from us. Flexing the toes through the right foot. And then coming to place that right foot back down to meet the left foot. We're turning the fingertips so they face, face the body again. And then we're going to lift the hips up towards the ceiling, creating a nice tabletop with the body. And then lowering the hips back down towards the mat. And we're bringing that left ankle towards the left knee. The right knee, sorry. And flexing the left toes, we're sending that left knee towards the front of the top of the mat energetically. Are you feeling that stretch along the outside of the hip, the glute? And then coming to unravel the legs. And then coming back up. So we're coming to extend the legs out long one more time. So coming into that forward fold variation. And this time we're going to take some single leg lifts. So this is going to be working into the hip flexors. Hip flexors are really great for building strength in the legs, but even contributing towards um, poses within back bends. Right, so we're bringing the fingertips so they're placing roughly around the outside of the kneecaps. And then we're flexing the toes again one more time. And then we're allowing the left toes to relax so that heel is then coming back towards the floor. And we're going to lift that right leg hover and then lower it back down and allowing that right toes to be relaxed as we then flex the left toes towards the face and then we hover the left leg. Creating a nice long spine seal and then lowering that leg and you might notice that that felt somewhat difficult in the quads because it is um, but you might not notice anything which is perfectly normal also because you might have super strong quads. Anywho, so then we're going to take this two more rounds on each side, but this time you might like to play with pointing, pointing the toes. So by that I mean we're sending the toes towards the top of the mat, so are you like a little ballerina? And then we're lifting that right leg, maybe hold for an extra second this time before lowering back down, allowing that leg to become normal again, and then we're pointing the left toes and hovering that left leg, maybe for an extra second this time. And then taking whatever variation feels good for you here, maybe even flexing or pointing. And taking one more round. Really feeling into those quads, into those hip flexors. 
Beautiful work, guys. To find our way into a tabletop. So coming to place the hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips or thereabouts. And then coming to find a neutral spine. We're bending, bringing that knee up towards the side for a fire hydrant. The right leg is coming up for fire hydrant. And we're going to take two more like this. And then on your third round, we're extending that leg out towards the side and we're bringing it down towards the mat. And we're lifting it back up, tucking it back in towards the body. And then maybe coming off the hands for just a moment before we come on to the other side. And coming back, taking the hands underneath the shoulders, the hips under the knees underneath the hips or thereabouts. And then we're bringing the right knee in towards the centre. We're lifting that knee up towards the hip height, coming to find your fire hydrant. And taking two more rounds. We're aiming to keep the chest down towards the mat. So we're not rotating the chest out towards the side. On that third round, we're extending that leg out, lowering it down towards the mat. Maybe you're looking at the foot, lifting it back up, tucking it back in, and then coming back to sit over the tops of the thighs. And then when you're ready, we're coming back into tabletop, coming onto the right side. So coming back onto the right side, we're going to take that one more time. So we're coming to find the hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, bringing the left knee in towards the centre, and then we're sending that right leg up so that the knee's about hip height for fire hydrant. We're extending that leg out long, coming to find it so it meets the mat, and then we're going to slowly walk the hands back, coming up, so that we are in a variation of gate pose. So the right hand might be down the right side of the body, we're going to send the left hand up towards the ceiling. As we then bend over towards the right side, finding our gate pose. Finding a nice long stretch on the left side of the body. And then coming back down towards the mat. And bring in the hands back underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And then we're bringing the right knee in towards the centre. We're extending that left leg up towards hip height. Taking a leg out long, extending, placing the foot down. Coming up nice and slowly, nice and gently. So that we're coming up nice and tall. And then the left arm might come down the left leg. So we're going to extend the right arm up towards the ceiling and we bend over towards the left side finding gate pose and finding a nice long stretch across the right side of the body. So I'll turn and face this side so you can see what it looks like. And then coming back through centre when you're ready. We're coming back to find ourselves into a tabletop pose. We're tucking the toes, lifting the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Moment here to pedal out the feet, and really slowing that movement down, really firming down through the hands, and then coming to find stillness in your downward facing dog. And maybe there's a little micro bend in the knees, helping you find some more length through the spine. And then start to bring some awareness into the hands. Start to bring some awareness into the thumbs and imagine that they're drawing together magnetically. So you're pushing down into the mat and you are creating the momentum as if the thumbs are coming towards each other magnetically, but you're not actually moving them. And just noticing what that does to the upper body, to what parts of the body that it might switch on. And then when you're ready, we're going to take the right hand over towards the left, maybe calf or thigh or ankle. And finding a twist here. And then on your next breath, bringing that right hand back down, taking the left hand over towards any part of the leg that's within reach for you. Finding that twist here. And then coming to place that left hand back down towards the mat. And then when you're 
your throw ready, we're going to walk towards the top of the mat and find ourselves in a forward fold. Firming down through the feet, through the big toe, the little toe, the heel, and coming up to rise. Bring the hands out nice and wide, palms meeting, drawing down through heart center. And then we're coming to find some chair pulses here. So we're coming to bring the hands out in front or maybe overhead. And we're coming to find our chair pose. So we're lowering the hips. Maybe the hands come to heart center or to cactus if it's too much out in front of you. And just taking a moment here in chair. And maybe you pulse coming up and down. There's some movement here in your chair. And then when you feel ready, coming to find some stillness, finding that heat in the legs, and then coming to find yourself so that you're on your tippy toes of your right foot. So we're still in our chair pose, and then we're putting all of our weight into our left leg as we come to hover the right foot for just a second as we then send it back behind us. Come in to find your crescent lunge. We're sending the hands up towards the ceiling. Maybe taking a variation of crescent that's a little bit different to where you've landed. And then on your next breath, we're coming to lower the knee towards the mat, that back knee towards the mat. Kissing the ground and coming straight back up. I'm going to take three more rounds like this. So we're kissing the knee to the mat. We're not staying there, we're coming straight back up. Great work, guys. And then bringing the hands up above or out in front. We're going to hop that back foot back in as it comes to meet the left foot back in our chair pose. We're coming back to the pulses <laughs> and back to that heat. And then when you're ready, we're putting all the weight into that right leg, really firming down into the right foot as we then come onto the left tippy toes. And then hovering the left leg for a split second as we then shoot it back, finding our crescent lunge. Taking any variation of arms here for you. And then we're going to lower that back knee so it kisses the mat and come straight back up again. Taking three more rounds like this. Great work guys. And then on your final round, we're hopping that back foot in. We're hovering it for a split second before we place it back down to meet the other foot. Coming to find chair one last time, I promise. Finding that pulse, if you want to, or stillness. And then coming up to rise, bringing the hands down through heart center and thanking your legs for carrying you through that. <laughs> bringing the hands beside the body, taking a moment here into Dasna. And then when you feel ready, we're bringing the hands over the head, drawing them down from heart center as we fold over the tops of the thighs. Coming to bring the hands to shins, shins to hands for halfway lift, nice flat back. Framing the feet, we're either stepping or jumping back. Coming in to find your plank, or maybe your knees are towards the mat, and we're lowering all the way down to the mat today. Untucking the toes, extending the legs long. And we're going to come in to find our Shalabhasana, our locust pose. So we're sending the hands behind us, they're beside the body. And then on the next breath, we're going to lift the head, lift the chest to begin with. And lowering back down. And then next, we're going to lift the legs. So we're pointing the toes. Maybe the toes are touching. Maybe the shins are off the mat. Maybe the knees, maybe even the thighs come a little bit off the mat. And then we're lowering them down. And then we're going to tie those both in together. So on your next breath, we're lifting the chest, lifting the legs, energetically sending the fingertips down towards the back of the mat, really reaching out for the crown of the head towards the front of the mat. Taking two rounds of breath here, or whatever's calling to you. 
and then coming to place the hands in front and then the forehead rests on top of the hands just taking a moment here and then when you're ready we're going to push up to tabletop and we're coming to find our way onto our backs so the knees are bent feet are planted on the mat I'm just taking a moment here to set up your foundations as we're going to come into a version of bridge. So when you feel ready, I'm going to tuck the tailbone, we're going to lift the hips up and we're going to take the feet just a slight bit forward ahead of us and come on towards the heels. I'm going to stay in here for three rounds of breath, really firming down through those heels, maybe pushing down through the hands, bringing the neck, chin, chin towards the chest. And then the next option here is to either stay here or come out, or we're going to bring the right knee in towards the right chest. And then we're sending that back down. And then doing the same with the left. So we're doing these versions of bridge marches. And taking two more rounds in your own time, if that feels right for you. And when you feel done, lowering the hips back down towards the mat, taking the feet out wide and allowing the knees to knock into one another. Coming to find a restorative resting pose here. That was some hot work we just did there, guys. And then next, when you're ready, we're gonna come to find a happy baby. So we're bending the knees, sending the hip, sending the feet, so that they we would firmly plant. And then next, transitioning into your version of Happy Baby. So we're bending the knees, bringing them towards the armpits. Imagining that the feet are imprinting on the ceiling. And taking any variation of hands that's calling to you. And we're aiming to keep the lower back firmly planted on the mat here. As we draw the knees down towards the armpits. Not necessarily will they meet, but this is where they are aiming for. I'm taking two more rounds of breath here. And then coming to extend the legs out nice and long, bringing the hands out beside the body, coming to find your final resting pose. Just taking a moment to make any adjustments. And then you might like to finish your practice here, or you might like to close off your practice with a final resting pose of Shavasana. So once you are in your final resting pose, coming to find any, find, coming to find stillness. And I'll guide you out once we are finished. Start to bring some movement into the fingers and the toes. And then projecting that movement into the wrists and into the ankles. And then maybe you bring the legs together and the arms go up above the head. And the feet and the fingertips stretch long away from each other, creating a nice long stretch through the body. 
And then on our next breath, coming over to one side, coming up to rise, coming to find a seat. And maybe the eyes are closed or there's a soft gaze out in front of you. Maybe the hands come to heart centre or they're placed somewhere else on the body. And just taking a moment here to acknowledge your presence on your mat today. And maybe taking a moment to set an intention, something for your day or for your week, maybe on or off the mat. And deepest gratitude to each of you for your practice here today. Namaste. Thank you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time you might be taking this class and hope to see you again soon. Thank you.